13 tables were in the temple. Eight of marble were the straight slaughter area upon which they would rinse the entrails. Two were to the west of the altar's ramp, one of marble, one of silver. Upon the marble one, they would put the limbs of the offerings, upon the silver utensils for the service. Two were inside the ant, one of marble and one of gold. Upon the marble, they would put on bread when it was brought in, and upon the golden one, when it was taken out. For regarding sanctified objects, we ascend, but do not descend. And one of gold on the inside of the temple upon which the pot of bread lay continually. Thirteen collection chests were in the temple upon which were inscribed respectively new scholar and old scholar, nest and young pigeon bird offerings, wood and frankincense, gold for utensils. The remaining six were used for various donated offerings. New scholar was for the scholar of each year, and old scholar was for one who did not pay his half shekel last year and pays it this year. Nest refers to turtle doves and young pigeon burnt offerings refers to young pigeons and all are burnt offerings. These are the words of Reb Yehuda, but the other sages say nest was used by one required to bring two birds, one a sin offering and one a burnt offering, but young pigeon burnt offering was for burnt offerings only. One who says I obligate myself to offer uh, wood may not bring less than two blocks. If he says frankincense, he may not bring less than a fistful. If he says Gold, he might be less than a gold dinner. Well, what was done with the funds in the six chests designated for uh, don the native offerings? They would bur buy burnt offerings, the meat for God, and the hides for the Kohanim. This exposition was expanded by Yehud uh, Yehud Yada, the Kohen Gadol. Where he is guilty, a guilt offering to Hashem. This is the general rule. Whatever becomes because of sin or because of guilt shall be used to purchase burnt offerings, the meat for God and the hides for the Kohanim. Thus, the two verses are reconciled. It is a guilt offering for Hashem and a guilt offering for the Kohanim. And it also says the guilt offering money and the sin offerings money shall not be brought to the temple of Hashem. They shall be for the Kohanim. Okay. All right, very exciting. Um, now, remember we've got these uh, 13 different chests. Um, and each one's designated for a different purpose. Now, what happens if you find money um, in between them? So that's what I, we start dealing with, and we'll segue off into a whole bunch. Then it's like we had before. If it's closer to one, it goes to one. If it's closer to the other one, it goes to the other one. If it's in the middle... Very good. Exactly. That's exactly, right? that's exactly what we're going to be dealing with now. So, Maus Shenim Tzu Bein Shekalim Lindava. Are you still breaking up? I don't yeah. know why, though. I can see that I'm breaking up when, when, your, when your picture freezes. Um, are you sure? Uh, whatever. It, it, does, it doesn't honestly matter whether it's on your side or my side. It says side. your internet connection is unstable. Does that mean me or you? Yeah. Okay, you're there. Okay. Now, now, you've got, now you're muted. Okay, that better? Yeah, that's better. Okay, so money that's found between the box that's designated for Shekalim and the one that's designated for Nadava, Karav Lishkalim, Lipul Lishkalim, Nindava, Lipul Nindava. You go to the one that is closer to. Anes, Mechzel, Mechzel. If it's right in the middle, I don't know what to do. So when it's uh, when it's right in the middle, then then we uh, the, then the money will go to Nadava, and we'll see the general rule at the end of it. Ben eight if there's mo if there's money that fell between that which de is designated for wood and that which is designated for frankincense, karav la eitim yiplu la eitim la lebona yiplu la lebona. Again, it goes to the one that is closer to mechta la mechta. But if it's fifty fifty, yiplu la lebona. Then it must go, then it must go to lebona. Why? So we're going to see that the principle is that it will always go to the more machmir of the two, which has got the higher kedusha. Uh, if it's if you're in Suffolk. okay. So in the previous case, when we had between Shkalim and Nadava, uh, the Shkalim is for Bedeka bias, and the Nadava is for what's going to go on the Mizbeach. So the, what's on the Mizbeach is is a higher kedusha, okay. Similarly with the Levona versus the wood, the frankincense actually go, uh, but while both of them go on the Mizbeach, um, 
the the wood is just a, a vehicle. It's just there to, to help everything else burn. Whereas the levona itself is a korban. It, you know, it's an it's an ikra part of the korban. Okay. Um, Should I just restart my computer? See if that helps. Um, okay. I'll pause. I'll, the the, the Levona is considered higher Kedusha than the Eitim because uh, it itself is a Korban, whereas the Eitim is just there as a vehicle to burn uh, the Korbanos. Okay. Ben Kinim le Gozele Ola, if it falls between the uh, the regular nests and the and the um, uh, le Gozele Ola and the birds that are specifically for a, for an Ola, Karov le Kinim, Iflu le Kinim, le Gozele Ola, Iflu le Gozele Ola. So what you do in the 50-50 case, that's always the interesting question, is why does it go to the Gozle Ola? Because the Gozle Ola are all Olos. And um, whereas a, reg a regular cane, a cane is for one Khatas and one Ola, um, okay, which means that uh, which means that the Ola is considered a Baha'i condition because it's all it's all burned. What happens if something is between Chulin and Maaseshani? Karam the Chulin, if the Chulin, the Maaseshani, if the Maaseshani. Mechta the Mechta, what happens 50 50? That's an easy one. You don't get much lower Kadusha than Chulin, so I guess it's going to go to Maaseshani. Okay, Zach Klaus. So your general rule is Holkim Achara Karab le Hakel. You can go to the closer one when it, for, uh, for, a lean, for a leniency if you have, a, if you have a, a one that is clearly closer. Mechta le Mechta le Hachmir, but when it's a 50 50 position, then you have to go to the more machmir, uh, the more machmir position. So now that we've been talking about the uh, the spekos of the of the, the things in the shkalim, so we segue into some other areas where you have spekos of um, of what money might be and how to deal with it. So Mishnah base, Maros shenim tzu lifnei sochre dahena. So you find so you know in the Jerusalem marketplace. They've got um, they've got all the all the places where they sell the behemoths that are korban grade, and you find money in that area. Leolam maser. It must be assumed to be maser money because people people come to Yerushalayim with maser sheni money and they buy and and that's what they do is they buy animals. So so you could say well hey maybe it came maybe it fell from the from the merchants you know once the once the money gets handed over uh, it, it, to purchase the uh, the animals. It the money becomes chulin and the animal becomes maser, right? So, so maybe the money fell from the merchants, in which case it would be chulin. So there, what do you say? Is well, who is it more likely that it came from? You've got tons and tons of people coming with with their maser money and only a few a few merchants. So the chances are that it fell from the people. So because there are more people who are carrying maser money, therefore, uh, therefore we assume that money that's found near near the the uh, animal merchants is is maser. So you find it, you know, by laws of Hashava Savedi, you can keep it, but you still have to treat it with the Kedusha of Masi Shani. Okay, what happens if you find money on Harabais? Okay, on Harabais, it's assumed to be Cholin. Because this is a, because um, even even during during the regal where, where most of the people are coming with, with Masi Shani money, nonetheless, the money that's found on the, on the Harabais, you go after, um, you go after the majority of the year, and we don't say that uh, <clears throat> that the regular changes anything because, um, or, or that it's money that fell out of the lishka because most of the people who are coming up up here, um, the chazaka is ena gizbar motzimas mitrumas lishka. Even even if it was money that came out of the lishka, they normally they they mechalel the money before they take it out. Remember so that they can give it as uh, as payment to the to the artisans. We have that whole little dance that we learned a few mishnahs ago, where they, where they, where they mechalel the the money onto onto the incense, and then they give the incense to the artisans, and then they buy it back, etc. So, so the money that's that's found on the on the harabais is assumed to be chulin. Are you still with me? Yes, you are. Okay, I'm with you on this. I'm just missing parts though because. Okay, and my last one, we just kind of deal with it, deal with it. Okay. Um, the Yerushalayim, what happens with money that's found generally around the area of the Yerushalayim? I'm sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't hear you. What happens generally around the Yerushalayim um, if you find money? So we, we've spoken about on Harabais, we've sort of spoken about in the in the marketplace where they, right. sell the, where they sell the animals for Korban. What happens if you're just walking around Yerushalayim and you find money? So now it depends what time of year it is. Bishasa Regal, during the time when the Ole, Ole Regalim are, are up there and they've got their um, and they've got their maser money. Um, we assume it to be maser. 
Bashak Kol Yom Hashana Cholin. But the rest of the year, we assume that this uh, that this money that you find around Yerushalayim is Cholin. Okay. Oh, God. Did you hear anything that I said? Um, the coins during, that are found in Yerushalayim during the regal must, must be assumed to be Maser, but the rest of the year you don't have to assume it's Maser, and you can assume it's it's Cholin. Right. So in a, in a, moving on from, uh, from, from money, what about meat that's found around, uh, around the place? Um, so in Mishnah Gimel, we say, So if you find meat inside the temple area, so it depends on what type of meat you find. If it's, if it's a varin, if you find uh, like whole chopped up area, uh, things of, 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 of large pieces of, of, of meat, they assume to be Ola, from, from Ola offerings. Right, which um, now this, it, sh- it should not have been left around. They should have been taken, or whatever. But if something fell or dropped, or in, in, and you don't know what it was, and nobody can tell you what this piece of meat is. So if it was an, if it was a whole aver cut in a way that you would uh, that you would put it on the mizbeach, then it must be assumed to be an ola. But chatichos, and if it's uh, and if they're small pieces, then we can assume that it's chatas meat that was meant to be eaten by kohanim. Now, what does that mean to us? Why are you actually going to put it on his back? No. Are you going to let the coin and eat it? No, because we don't know how long it's been there. So we we don't so we don't know that we can actually put it on his back. It might be Nosak. So Elamai, what you have to do? We'll explain this uh, in, um, in, in 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 later in the mission. Uh, because you also ask the question: What what happens if you find meat around you Shalayim? It must be assumed to be pieces of shlamim shlamim meat. Can you eat it? No, because it's uh, because we have no idea how long it's been, uh, how, how long it's been, and maybe it's and maybe it's become nasa. So what does the Mishnah tell us? Leave it. Put it aside and wait until the time limit has passed, so that we know for sure that this meat is nasa. So if you're talking about shlamim meat, then you got to wait for two days, because it could be that it's just that it's just come out from the, from the mikdash today. So you got to wait until tomorrow, and the end of tomorrow until sunset tomorrow. Then you know for sure it's not and then it can be burned. Otherwise, you're not you're not allowed to burn something before it's reached its time. Whereas uh, the the olos and the chat, and the chataos have got a shorter time frame, um, and you can and you can uh, and you can just wait uh, until uh, until the um, the next day to, in order to in order to allow them to burn. So there, it's a, it's a it's a cooler basically by the Chatas and the Ola. Nimta um, the Now, what happens outside the Mikdash? You find uh, you find meat outside of the Mikdash. Evarin, if you find it chopped into into large pieces, then we must assume that it's Nevela, because that's the way that you cut it up to give to the dogs. Chatechos, however, if it's cut up into nice steaks and uh, and chops or whatever it is that uh, that looks like it's made for human consumption. Then we can assume that it's kosher meat, assuming that it's in a, a town where most of the butchers are kosher. Okay, because then whatever comes, to, whatever we find like that, we assume comes from the majority. And if the majority of the butchers are kosher, then the, then we can assume that the meat is kosher too. And what happens during the time when it's uh, when it's when it's the, the um, during the chagim? When there's a lot of meat being chopped up and and uh, and distributed around, half a varian mutar, and then even the uh, then even the large the large pieces are considered mutar because uh, it's likely come from from a butcher who just didn't get the opportunity to chop it into pieces yet. Okay, Adkan. Okay, um, there's something that came in my mind when you were talking that you said the majority of the butchers are kosher. Yes. I can't imagine the time of the temple that there were all there were non-kosher butchers around. If there were, non, if there were non-Jews living around uh, Israel, they oh, had no obligation to keep kosher. Yeah, and you certainly did have non-Jews living in in, in yeah. Israel. It wasn't a... right. I keep thinking of it. I still have that misconception. You know, it's not that misconception. There are only Jews there. You know, and this it's not no. okay. Where, where are we going to? Uh, let me see. Gimel base. Okay, here we are. And we three baskets of three sa'a each. They withdrew the truma from the funds in the treasury chamber, and on them were written the Hebrew letters Alpha Bet Gimel. Rabbi Yisrael says the Geek letters Alpha Bet Gamma were written on them. The one who withdraws, thank you, 
The one who withdraws the truma may not enter the treasury chamber wearing a hemmed garment or with a shoe or a sandal, nor with a fillin or an amulet, lest he become poor. And people might say, because of the sin of stealing from the treasury chamber, has he, he has become impoverished. Or right? lest he became rich, and people might say he has enriched himself with the truma of the treasury chamber. For a person must please people in the same manner that he must please the uh, omnipresent. For he has said, and you shall be guiltless before Hashem and before Israel. And it's also said, and find favor and good understanding in the eyes of God and mankind. Each member of Rabbi Gamaliel's household would enter the treasury chamber with his half shekel between his fingers and throw it before the one withdrawing the truma. The one withdrawing the truma would purposely push it into the basket. The one making the draw did not withdraw the truma until they had required, shall I withdraw the truma? And they replied to him, withdraw, 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 three times. And after he had made the first truma withdrawal, he covered the remaining money with leather covers. After the second withdrawal, he covered the remaining money with leather covers. But after the third withdrawal, he did not cover the remaining money. The money is covered lest he forget and withdraw from an accumulation for which funds had already been withdrawn. He withdrew the first truma on behalf of the inhabitants of the Israel, the second on behalf of the inhabitants of the cities surrounding it, and the third on behalf of the inhabitants of Babylon, Medina, and the distant, uh, distant countries. Okay. Fucking base bub. Uh, and now there are there are the herbs which which one uh, um, fulfills his obligation on Pesach with lettuce and ives, horseradish, chachavina, and mora. One fulfills his obligation with them whether moist or dry, but not preserved, nor stewed, nor boiled, and they combine to the size of a beta. And one um, and one can fulfill his obligation with the stalk, with the mai, and the first tithe whose truma has been separated and the consecrated property, and second tithe that were redeemed. We may not soak brand for chickens, but we may scald it. A woman may not soak brand to take with into the bath, but she may rub it on her dry skin. And a man may not chew wheat and place it on his wound on Pesach because it becomes chamate. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, flour may not be put into any of the chorosis nor into the mustard. However, if one did put it in, it must be eaten immediately, but Red Mayor forbids it. We may not cook the Pesach offering either in liquids nor in fruit juices, but we may baste it and dip it in them. The waters used by a baker must be poured out because they may become comates. Okay, Bechurim. I should be in base above. The etrog is like a tree in three ways and like vegetables in one way. It is like a tree regarding Arla, Ravai, and the seventh year. And like vegetables in one way and that its tithing is at the time of the gathering. So Rabbi so says Rabbi Gamil, and Rabbi Elia says it's like a tree in all things. The, the blood of hy, uh, biped pets is like the blood of animals, in that it renders the seed susceptible, and one is not liable on account of the blood of creeping things. The koi is in some ways like an undomesticated animal, and in some ways like cattle, and in some ways it is like cattle, and like an undomesticated animal, and in some ways it is neither like cattle, nor like an undomesticated animal. How is it? Like, That's it. How is it? Yeah. We have Zavan. Um, hey, Yud. One who touches a sheritz or semen, or one who has touches that which contracted tumor from a corpse, or one who touches a bazaar during the days of his counting or purification water of an amount insufficient for sprinkling. Or an animal carcass, or the contaminated saddle of a zav. Contamination one contaminates one and invalidates the other. This is the rule. Anything that touches one of the avos tuma uh, listed in the Torah contaminates one and invalidates one, except for a person. Once it separates, it also it also contaminates one and invalidates one. The human, while while the human is in contact with the original source of tuma, he acts like a, an electrical conduit. But once uh -huh. he enters, then he then he drops down a level. A man who has discharged semen is like one who has touched a sherets, and a man who has cohabitated with a nida is like one who has touched a corpse. However, a, a man who has inhabited with a nida has a stringency over one who has touched a corpse, for he contaminates a couch, a couch and a seat with a light form of tumor, enabling them to contaminate food and beverages. These things invalidate tumor, tumor. One who um, uh, eats a, for food which is a reshon, the tumor, and one who eats food which is a shani of the tumor, and one who drinks liquids that are tummy, one whose head and the greater part of his body enters into a drawn water, and a tower person in this event that three logum of drawn water fall upon his head. 
and the greater part of his body, and a scroll of scripture and unrinsed hands, and a table yom, and food and utensils that became contaminated by tummy liquids. Okay. Hajjan Allah Masech is having tomorrow is Tvul Yom. Tvul Yom, Tvul Yom. We are in Hay, Vav Hay, Vav Hay. Regarding all animals that are prohibited for the altar, their offspring are permitted. Regarding the offspring of a trefer, Red Eliezer says it may not be offered on the altar, but the sages say it may be offered. Red Kanina, the son of Antigone, says a non trefer that suckles from a trefer is disqualified from being offered on the altar. Regarding all consecrated animals that have become trefos, we may not relieve, relieve them because they do not, uh, we do, one may not redeem consecrated animals in order to feed them to dogs. There are laws pertaining to items consecrated to the altar that are not applicable to items consecrated for the upkeep of the temple. And there are laws pertaining to items consecrated for the upkeep of the temple that are applicable to items consecrated to the altar. Items consecrated to the altar can reduce the tamura, and we are liable on their account for pitil, nosar, and tame. Their offspring and milk are prohibited after their redemption. One who slaughters them outside the temple is liable, and we do not give uh, of them to craftsmen for their fee. And this is not the case with things consecrated for the upkeep of the temple. Here are laws pertaining to items consecrated for temple. To keep upkeep that are not applicable to items consecrated to the altar as follows. Unspecified consecrations are assumed to be to temple upkeep. Temple upkeep sanctity takes effect about all things. We transgress me'ila by benefiting from that which grows from them, and those in them that no benefit for the uh, there's no benefit for the kahana. That's it. Okay, and finally, oh, uh, okay. base five. Man is always mu'ad, whether unintentionally or unintentionally, whether awake or asleep. But if he blinded another's eye or broke vessels, he pays the full damages. If one leaves a jug in a public domain and someone else comes along and stumbles over it and breaks it, he is exempt. If he is injured by it, the owner of the jug is liable for this injury. If one's jug broke in a public domain and someone slipped on the water and was hurt by the shards, he is liable. Rabbi Yehuda says if he intended, he is liable, but if he did not intend, he is exempt. If one spills water in a public domain and someone else is injured by it, well, he is liable for the money, for his, for his injury. If one hides thorns or glass, or if one makes offensive thorns, or if a fence that fell into a public domain and others are injured by them, he is liable for the injury. Hi. Okay, I'm very sorry. I will make, try to make sure this doesn't happen again, but uh, you know, have a great day. Be yeah. well. Thank you.